We have a really, really, really great, great show for everybody today on here at Jets Chaos. We have a great, great show. It's a great show. It's called the Pride and Chaos Show. I'm going to be joined a little later on by somebody who's not the one, but uh, he's something. That's for sure. I'll tell you that. But anyway, we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about the New York Jets. And we're going to talk about Brock Bowers and how he's destroying our fan base, potentially. Or maybe he hasn't, and I'm overreacting. Maybe everybody's overreacting. Maybe we're just looking for something to talk about. I don't know. But we're going to talk about it anyway until you're sick and tired of hearing about it. And we'll be right back right after this really exciting intro. That my co-host friend created for us way back a long time ago because we are talentless and have no creativity and needed somebody to do it for us because we're basically talented, talentless losers that you choose to listen to. So we'll be back right after this. And now, welcome to Pride and Chaos. Welcome to the darkest year of our adventure. Oh, yeah! And now, give it up for Jeremy and me. And as usual, Nick is wrong. Why are you the way that you are? God, I can't stand you. Let's go to eat a damn snack. Whoa, that was cool. Well, now that that's been taken care of and we've played the introduction, let me introduce to you my co-host. Now! Suddenly, I found my voice. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, from Richmond, Virginia, the truck driving, nine tone walking, wet pants, hoodie wearing, French fry quesadilla eating, the Romeo of Richmond. The King of Virginia, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, the proud one, the Jet fan, prouder than all Jet fans, please welcome the greatest co-host of the world, Nick Chang. There he is, baby. There he is. I need a nap after that. That was exhilarating. <laughs> you hear me okay? Yeah, I'd be half dead already if I was you. I am. Oh, I've been more than half dead since before I met you. <laughs> what is going on, Nick? You are in Virginia, and everybody in the chat is excited to see you. And when I only... see everybody, I mean Snowball, Dano, and Matheus. I was going to say, only one of those Matheus? <laughs> Matheus? Matheus? <laughs> Matheus. Wasn't that the bad guy in uh, Gladiator? Oh, maybe. Maybe like there, there was a bad guy. That's for sure. J nine, baby. J nine. You gotta say it like Baba Booey. J nine. J nine. Baba Booey. My my professional life is like a four, and my love life is like a nine. <laughs> oh look, he's helping me out. Matthias. Matthias. There's Why no are we th- spelling out Matthias's name? Like, we don't know how to fucking say it. There's no th. It's just Matthias. Thigh, like your thigh on your leg. Matthias. That's not how he spelled it. He wrote Matthias. So Dano can't even do it right. Why are we looking at Dean for answers in the fucking universe? Why would we listen to Dane for anything? <laughs> yeah. Why are we looking at Dane for clarity on anything? 
Dane's the, the Dane's the kid that sat in the back corner of the classroom throwing paper balls at the teacher's head. He fucking chews bubble gum and sticks it under the desk still at this age. <laughs> he used to eat freaking those onion funyun things in class. And <laughs> I can't believe I talked shit to the wrong guy for three minutes. Look who's back. Twisted. He's <laughs> back, Davey. <laughs> Twisted is back. <laughs> maybe, maybe after He's signing back. those three offensive linemen and signing Mike Williams, Twisted scratched his head and said, "You know what? This team might be able to win some games." <laughs> uh, um, I think that we could win some games. We'll talk about that. Right, let's win some games. Yeah, yeah. So here we are. You know, it's weird because. People just assume that whoever you know the first week of free agency is the only week that matters, but the truth first is six free hours. Agency, free first agency, six hours. The right people think the first six hours that's you know and that's done, but the reality is that we still got a long way to go before the draft, and a lot can still happen because there's a lot of players still out there, isn't there, Nick? No way. Uh, you're lying because I read on the interwebs. Yeah, and if you don't sign somebody by four o'clock on the first day of the open tampering tampering period, yeah, you're a horrible GM, yeah. and, and you're like back on my bed asleep. There's no way that this team could have improved the last couple of weeks. How how could that have happened? Yeah, I'm shocked. Good to see. You. We know we know you never gave up on them. You just needed no. a break. We gotta bust your balls when you return. What, what do you what do you expect from us? Of course, we're gonna bust your balls a little bit. We we were called the the best tandem on YouTube the other day by two people I believe on Sunday night. Get out of here! Oh, so, I mean we have to. I I mean I did create two burner accounts, so it was just me typing. <laughs> but still, it was in the chat, right? <laughs> right. If it's so in the if chat, it lives in the interwebs forever. If it's in print, it's real. Don't That's you it. know? That's it. <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's it. Say anything you want now in the world. That's as it. long as it's in print somewhere, it's real. That's it. <laughs> Uh, the All that matters. Song. Can I can I go on a rant? Yeah. Can I can I get like can I get like a a rant time? We need a we need a rant kind of thing. Are you looking for like a rant kind of um introduction to your rant? That no, kind of no, no. I just I just like, want to. I just wanted to let you know it would be a rant in case we want to like chop it up, or oh. like you know. Or short it like it's <laughs> that okay, was me so... in the lobby after talking shit to the wrong guy. Bruh, bruh, bruh. No, like we do need like a rant intro. Like I think that would be really cool to have like an introduction to like a rant that's coming. You know what I mean? Uh when Jeremy's on the couch, he's not wearing pants. Listen up, everybody, it's time for a rant. How's that? I don't know. So here it is. Hold on. <laughs> Checking. I'm testing everything out. Okay, that's the rant intro. Go ahead. Here we go. One, two, three. I had a tweet the other day. And this is going out to all of Jets fans, myself included. Not Green Bean, though, because Green Bean always has to be right, and that's all that matters to him because he even commented on the tweet that it's all that matters. So we have to clarify that. As long as everyone else accepts this besides Green Bean, it doesn't matter if I'm right with who they pick, if Jeremy's right with who they pick, if any of you are right or anybody on Jets Twitter. It doesn't fucking matter. All of this is just a time fill. Because it's the off season and we're bored. Now, here's what matters. There's only one guy in the entire world that we need to be right. And that's Joe Douglas. Can we at least all agree on that? I don't care if they pick who I want. I don't care if, if they Jeremy wants Fuaga or Latham or Mims or whoever or if it's Neighbors or Odunze, or if it's Bowers, or even if your boy Nick, who said in January two months ago, if we get three offensive starters 
on the line and another wide receiver, defensive line could be in play. And now all of a sudden today, we don't get clowny, and you see everyone saying defensive line could be in play at 10, including Connor Hughes. It doesn't matter if I said all that. All that matters is what Joe Douglas does, either if it's trading up, trading back, or keeping 10 and making the selection. That's all that matters, guys. If you're wrong, who gives a shit? Who are you? Who am I? Who's Jeremy? None of our opinions matter in the grand scheme of things when it comes to construct constructing and building the New York Jets. Joe Douglas, a little bit of Robert Sala, the scouting staff, these guys need to be right. These guys need to hit a grand slam. So whoever we want, it's fun to fill time with, but it doesn't mean a fucking thing. That was the jet going by to tell you I was done. Oh, well, uh, Monday I'll time it better, but let me just do this. Oh, one day bruh, I'll do I'll bruh. do it. Just, we're learning. Bruh. Bruh. I feel like Nikki's here. <laughs> so that's all. I just everybody's getting too nuts and 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 people are arguing with friends. So people who, who met in person and shake hands and hug are now arguing and bickering on the internet because if you don't agree with me, I'm against you. Like, what the fuck is that? It's a draft. Look, 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 and it kind of it, it kind of sets me up for this. It's like hold on, let me set you up for this while you're talking. Look at the size of that fucking quesadilla. That's some fattiness. Yeah. All right, go ahead. I'm going to give you an, uh, and I want to put in an example of how wrong it is for Jeff Fans to fight over this, right? Because let's say a Jeff Fan, let's say you have, uh, you know, and Dano, you need to hear this, Dano. Like, let's say Dano says to Johnny Jimenez, he says, Johnny Jimenez, you're an idiot for saying that we should take a tackle with number 10, right? Well, that part's true. Johnny is an idiot. Well, Go on. Johnny Jimenez gets upset because he called him an idiot or whatever, and, and, and they have a little bit of a fight, right? And then what happens if Johnny Jimenez gets hit by a truck and dies? What happens if a truck runs over Johnny Jimenez and splashes his guts across wait, the highway? Wait, am I driving a truck? No. All right, then I'm fine with this analogy. Okay. Continue. So, so now we have Johnny Jimenez. He's dead. He's dead. His guts are all over the place. Okay, this is a piece of his head is is like landed on a barbecue just for the irony of it because he likes the barbecue. He's got a foot somewhere else that's missing a toe, so he finally got his dream of being more like Nick. Right. So pieces of Johnny Jimenez are everywhere. He's dead. He's splattered. This poor wife's got to raise 37 children on her own. Now, how do you feel if you're Dano? Because your last words to him were calling him a schmuck because he wanted to take an offensive tackle in the draft. Do you know what I'm saying? What if Snowball was in his car and he sees somebody in the parking lot and thinks it's me lost, but it's some guy who takes a knife and he shoves it in Snowball's head? Instantly cutting his brain off from reality and ending his life without any last second thoughts and ripping his soul right out of his head so there is no afterlife for him. What if that happens? Are you going to want the last thing you said to Snowball be something like, you're stupid for wanting a wide receiver at 10? Is that what we've come to? I mean, do we really want to do that? What if Dana, what if somebody said, hey, look at this ginger. He's a skinny, scrawny, nothing. And they decide to take him and they pull him in an alley and they beat him up. And then, you know what? They say, you know what? That's not a good enough. That's not look good enough. So what they do is they take his head and they do the Game of Thrones imitation. They go, and they crush his head and his bladders all over the place. And Dana's dead. How are you all going to feel for on. not agreeing with him with a freaking draft pick? I mean, we really got to be better to each other, people, because you don't know when this is going to happen. This could happen. All right. I think I only have one follow-up question to that. And this is a natural transition. Jeremy, who do you want them to take a 10? I would like them to trade down. <laughs> doesn't matter who you want them to take. Yes. I feel like mankind. I'm start running around the room. <laughs> what do you think they should do at 10? Well, I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter what you think. <laughs> no, honestly. 
Look, I the reason that I'd want to trade down is because no matter who we pick, I'm going to like it, right? Based on the guys that are there, unless it's like Cooley McKinstry, right? But like, if they let's say they take Bowers, or let's say they take uh, Adunze, or let's say they take Fashano, like any of those guys, it's going to be exciting. I'm going to say, holy shit, that's a great player, and here's why it's going to be great. Like, you know, and it's going to be exciting because I'm going to say, okay, because if it's one of the, if it's a tackle like Vashano, I'm going to say, oh, left tackle for the future is going to be settled now. And now we don't have to worry about one of, if one of our tackles get hurt, we're going to just bring in Fashano and we're going to, we're going to be okay. So if it's Adunze, I'm going to say, oh my God, this could be, he could be a really great compliment to Garrett Wilson and him and Mike Wilson and Garrett Wilson. We have depth and it's going to be really exciting. We have this other weapon. If it's Bowers, I'm going to say, holy shit, we're going to have Michael Williams and Garrett Wilson. And then we could put Bowers in the slot. Oh my God, how a defense is going to match up against that. There's all kinds of reasons why I'll be excited no matter who we pick. But at the same time, if we make a pick at 10, I'm going to be like, shit, we don't pick again until 72. And that sucks. I agree. I think Dane, uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. He obviously got hacked. Not like Ron Goldman hacked, but hacked. Um, I also say that some creators are pinning the entire vibe of the fan base on what the vibe of Jets Twitter is. Jets Twitter is not equal to fan base. Jets Flint. Jets Twitter is one platform and it's a conglomeration of idiots. I, <laughs> it's true. Here's the thing. I think there's more to that. I'm an idiot no matter what platform I'm on. Jeremy just heard me talking shit to some innocent guy because I was calling out the wrong guy in the lobby for being mean to my waitress who's very nice to me. And then when I went back up to the counter and told her as I was on the phone with Jeremy, I was like, Oh, yeah, I just talked shit to him. She's like, Oh, I was sitting behind him. She goes, No, that's not him. It was the one in the pink shirt. I'm telling the guy he's a Awful low life. Hey, you, you were talking such shit. And I'm sitting five feet behind the guy, and I flipped the camera so Jeremy can see. I'm like, "Who's mean to a waitress? Like, what? How big of a loser do you have to be? I hope your wife is cheating on you with your brother while you're down here at this hotel." And Jeremy's like, "What the hell is wrong with you? You actually say this stuff to people?" And then I said it to the wrong guy. <laughs> but anyway, on Twitter, there are so many people that don't have youtube channel or content right that's their content that's their character is being on twitter and trying to get something to go viral or trying to get somebody famous like jeremy to like their tweet or acknowledge their tweet i mean you almost have five thousand subs you're, you're famous to me excuse me <laughs> i mean we're talking about everyone else dying here but snowball's a pussy who couldn't hit the fucking gas pedal so I, I gotta he say, ruined, he ruined my life by not hitting you. <laughs> how are you not blown away by Dana using the word conglomeration? I'm more fascinated with you trying to say that word. <laughs> conglomeration, conglomeration. I mean, like, like just him using that word that doesn't blow your mind. He's in no, one of those. No, I, I think he went to type another c word. He's one he of went to type like names. see you next Tuesday and autocorrect put that in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> There's no way he's, highly, that on he's one of those highly intelligent, like, you know, oh, he's trash, an eye functioning uh, idiot. Trail park guys. You know, he's like a very intelligent one, though. He's our rain man. <laughs> he's our <laughs> so bad. He's our rain man. <laughs> Look oh. who's here, by the way. Knobcraft is here. Hey. Yes. Hey, Knob. I was supposed to highlight his text just because he's a member. He's not supposed to have to give super chats to get some attention. He's a member of the channel. He deserves acknowledgement. I know. He deserves acknowledgement. Okay? But yet he gave a super chat anyway. What a nice guy. On behalf of the hotel workers, I applaud you. My staff appreciates people like you. That's a high-value demonstration. Wow. And let me give you more specifics, Knobcraft. He, she was upset. She said, this is the guy who did it. I was on the phone. He had me on FaceTime so I could, I could see it. He was loudly saying, what kind of piece of shit gives a hard time to a person working their ass off in a hotel, mm -hmm. trying to please their guests and make everybody feel comfortable? What kind of low? And the guy, even though he wasn't guilty, you saw him tensing up because Nick was saying it so loud. He had the ball. I feel bad. 
almost like maybe he's that same guy, even though he was innocent this time, maybe, maybe he, three years ago. Was mean oh, to a wow. guy because he was getting all like flustered, like all oh, tight. Wow. He was like rubbing his head, like he got real yeah, nervous. And twitchy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't like that, man. People, the ladies here, she works from five to ten every night. She's doing the hotel. She does the bar. She does the kitchen in the back. She made me a coffee and didn't charge me for it. She gave me French fries and didn't charge me for it. She offered me a shot on Sunday night when I got here, but I denied it. I turned it down. But I'm not turning down free French fries. The fuck you think I am? I quit drinking. I didn't quit living life. Give me a and she comes out to me. And Jeremy, I don't know if you heard her. She goes, and I made them well done because I know that's how you like them. Oh wow. That's amazing. She knows always, New Yorkers like always be good them. to the people that make your food. What is wrong with people? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I hate that stuff. And just so you know, Knobcraft, um, I felt it. And then when she told me at the counter, she's like, no, not him. I, go, I was sitting right behind him. I confirmed with you. She's like, no, it's the guy in the pink shirt. It's like a 70-year-old guy. Now I just looked at him and I shook my head because I already shot my load on the rant. <laughs> Jeremy's in my ear. Wait, you're saying this out loud? Like he's in yeah. California and he's nervous about me in Virginia. I it was one of those things where I was so uncomfortable, even though I, like I'm safe on my phone, but I couldn't even look at my phone because I couldn't believe what you were doing. It was so bad. He goes, he goes to me, I've seen you do this like drunk on the street in New Brunswick when Mark Riss with the 20 bucks. He goes, I didn't think you'd do this stuff sober. I go, Oh no, I'm a bigger asshole sober. Yeah, I just didn't think you would do that sober. I couldn't believe it, man. I was like, I was like, it was, it's like Larry David if he had the muscle. That's what you right? That's what he yeah. said. It's like Larry David if he had the muscle. Like, not just like, 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 <laughs> it's just amazing. Larry David has to pay people to act and sit there through his rants. I create those situations in real life voluntarily. <laughs> Be nice to people, man. Why is that so hard? I That's get what she said. at least four times a month to deal with people who shit on their servers. It's on call for. Do you want to take to under over on how many people back off when I do a table touch? Uh, I love it. He, yeah, I remember in the parking lot, uh, Knobcrest, a big dude. Yeah, he's a very large guy. He's a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big dude wearing his weird well, sports coats with all the designs on it. Like, he's yeah, not, he's, 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 he's doing a table touch. Up. I just wish I was the table. <laughs> a table touch. All right. I always think when I hear table touch, like because I imagine standing by the table, isn't it like the groin area that's touching the table when you do a table touch? Oh, you're letting the hammer just hang? <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. It'd be like a thimble. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. All right. thanks. But thanks to the super chat uh, knob. And yeah, we got your back, man. We're not going to tolerate people be, being mad to the service industry. We're tired of it. Respect people. They're doing the hardest job in the freaking world. And it's like, the, it's not, there's very little gratitude for it, too. Um, I will say this I, I will update Johnny with this answer. Uh, I was lucky when I got here Sunday night. I was the seventh person, and there was one female. And then a guy got sent home on Monday because there was a paperwork error. So two, what's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Tuesday night, I got condensed into another room. And the, the roommate that I have right now is because uh, Swift puts people in double rooms to save money on the amount of rooms that they have to get. Mm -hmm. So I do have a roommate, but he's not here right now. I had to move to another room. What do you mean? So you're in his room, but he's not there. Do you know where he is? He was like in the lobby watching like YouTube. I went out and I hung out in the lobby yesterday for a few hours. So I just think he was like, today, I told him I had to do the show. So I think he was just being polite and going out there for a while. Yeah. He's also freezing in that room because you're insisting on keeping it. Oh, he had it colder than me. He had it down to 61. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I have it at 68 60, right now. 68? That's a good time. 61 when, it, when it's 50 degrees outside. 61 is a little frigid. I'll even admit that. Yeah. So... The only person who gets to belittle myself is me. <laughs> yes, I think he said yes to pushing his groin against the table. Oh, yeah, you have to. <laughs> free ball, free ball, free ball. <laughs> Knock the salt over with it. 
dude, you got to be a really stupid person to piss off a serving staff and to piss off a chef in a restaurant. Like, like how freaking dumb could you be? You know what I mean? If I think the freaking staff is mad at me, I can't freaking eat. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, I'm not touching that. Oh, you're panicking. They can do anything. Well, that's they why I'm always that. supportive too. Huh? That's why I'm always supportive. I know. They kind of squirter. <laughs> wish. Why is the wall painted like that? He's saying. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't fucking design the room. That's the fucking. So that's you've been the... through, you've been through three days, and you're mm-hmm. learning about the inspection and all and all the different parts of the truck. And when do you start driving? Next week, we're still doing um, Friday afternoon. We might get out there uh, just to like introduce ourselves to the truck. Uh, get to introduce like sit. To the truck. Well, you sit in the truck. You get to you get to okay. know it and see the controls up in person and all the lights and whistles and bells and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then next week. Where we go from the class to where we are out all day with the truck from six to seven thirty in the morning, um, and it's cool as two people got sent home, so there's only three of us, so we all get more time with the truck behind the wheel. Um, he's like, sometimes we had a class with nine, and he goes, and it's a lot tougher. He goes, but now if there's only three of you, he's like, you guys will get so much time behind the wheel and everything. There's no reason that any of you, even if you're like I've I've been vocal. Like I don't know cars and vehicles very well. So the walk around inspection is the part. I'm not worried about driving. I can drive it no fucking problem. I, I know down the world with that I can drive anything. Um, <clears throat> it's just the verbal walk around inspection is the part that I'm worried about. And they were like, "Trust me." He's like, "You'll have plenty of time to learn it." He goes, "You have two full weeks to learn it." And he goes, "The last week, Monday and Tuesday." All you will do all day is go through that until it's drilled into your head and you can do it. And then Tuesday, we submit the button. Thursday, 48 hours later, you do the test. One guy will go at 7, one guy will go at 10.30, and the other guy will go at 1. And you get two and a half hours to do that. So um, why did the other two get sent home? Uh, One was a paperwork issue. And I think the other one was a drug test issue. She went for a drug test, never came back. Wow. <laughs> went for a drug test, never came uh-huh. back. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. It's good to be sober, isn't it? <laughs> Man, I don't have to worry about that shit. I'm worried about my health, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, but that well, that's, uh, wow, only three of you, so you'll get to drive a lot of hours. So um, Yeah, that, that's, cool. that's the cool part. You'll be a lot more comfortable. You already know how to drive a truck in this in a sense. Is it any different than a car? I mean, are there things you have to do or no, the only thing that's different, obviously, uh is you gotta get used to the higher angle, you know, and seeing the road from up there. And then backing up is more difficult than anything. Like the first week, all you do is you're driving forward and backing up. You're driving forward from offset and turning the truck back into that spot because that's that's a big part of it. Driving straight is easy. Yeah. You know, not that you know anything about being straight, but if you read the internet, you would know that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Back in his home country, Johnny drove a truck a lot, right? I mean, you didn't have to learn. You just it was part of life there. You know, you just drove trucks on dirt roads. Okay, I'm just assuming. You know, you get by. You got to do what you got to do. I'm sure he drove a truck. And he got in a heated argument with his toaster this morning. (laughs) <laughs> I've almost you know, you know what it's just crazy because I because it's it's always funny when it's true <laughs> like let me be a total racist asshole to my friends and now he's laughing going it's true <laughs> it wasn't a truck it was a Volkswagen bug but there was just 34 people in it <laughs> Rich it did you get like engaged a I think Rich got engaged. Whoa. It's a diamond ring in his or he won a Super Bowl ring. Is that is that a Super Bowl ring? Oh, maybe he wants a Super Bowl ring, but it looked to me like he was saying like maybe he's announcing he's engaged. He's saying, he's saying it looks, looks like an engagement ring to me. No, it can't be an engagement ring because he's smiling in his YouTube photo. He looks happy. Twisted, who's done everything in this lifetime, has says backing up is the main failure here. 
DOT yeah. sucks when it comes to that. You got one shot to back it up in the cones to the line, get it wrong, and you fail. Does that scare you? No. I'm, I'm not worried about driving. <laughs> I'm watching people back up and having a difficult time, and I'm sitting there saying, turn the wheel the other way, turn the wheel the other way. Like, It's just your thing. You're good at this shit. I'm, I'm, I'm easy to with driving. You're a Jet fan. Jet fans can drive trucks. Let's yeah. say that right now. I've driven home from that stadium with one eye. I can drive a tractor trailer sober. I'm telling you, man, if you can get out of that parking lot at MetLife yeah. after football games, you're prepared for everything. There's no If you can that. find a car in the parking lot, you can get navigate through life with no problem. I don't know, Snowball. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll let you know Monday or Friday afternoon. I don't think there's backup cameras. I mean, they should have them because there's women that drive. Oh. <laughs> I mean, isn't so. it going to be, a, there's going to be a day in the very near future where every new truck that comes out is going to have a big screen, like the electric, like one of those dash screens with the cameras, yeah. and you're going to oh. see everything. The cool part is every truck that Swift has now is automatic. So I don't have to learn how to drive a manual in three weeks. Right. And then take the test. So I know how to drive. I haven't driven a manual since like 96 when I was a senior. I buddy borrowed my buddy's car to go hook up with my girlfriend during his baseball game. And he let me use it. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know how to drive it. And I'm trying to put it in gear during the baseball game. And he's like at second base, like turning it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I came back like an hour later, the whole team cheered for me because he told everyone where I was going. <laughs> yeah, no, I learned how to drive stick when I lived in California in 96. You never really forget. That's the funny thing. It's like for me, it's probably been. 15 years but i could jump in a car right now and drive it if it's thick i mean it might be a little rough in the beginning because i gotta get used to that clutch and everything but i'd be able to do it yeah i'm, I'm happy that i don't have to deal with the with the double clutching and all that and some of them are 12 or 13 or 18 gears some of these older trucks so mm. using a shadow that makes sense yeah. Uh, the only manual I know is Bell Up. <laughs> so, look. That uh, been such a good joke to throw at Johnny, Dane. Do you think that um, – do you do you believe, like – and maybe they just don't know our GM. Like, are we the favorites to take Bowers? People are saying it's his most likely landing spot. Do you buy that? I think there's interest. Um. I think that I put this out on Twitter and I got a lot of reaction and conversation from it. You can say, I don't want Bowers. You can say, we don't need a tight end. But don't tell me because we have Tyler Conklin, that's a reason to not draft Brock Bowers. I, I can't get behind that. Don't tell me Tyler Conklin. The guy very rarely gets separation. He's been in the league six years, has seven yeah. touchdowns. Two of the years, he was a main player with Kirk Cousins and still couldn't get in the end zone. Kirk Cousins threw 36, 33, 25, 30 touchdowns in the four years that Conklin was in Minnesota, and he only had three touchdowns while he was there, or four. So just don't use Conklin. Like, Conklin's nice. He's a nice tight end, right? No one is breaking their back to, to sign Tyler Conklin if he's on the market. Um, it is kind of it is nice, it is and, kind and, of that, and that's okay. Will he be better with Rodgers? Sure, the whole offense will be better with Rodgers because there'll be longer drives, there'll be more touchdowns. Stats will look better when you score touchdowns, right? You go five catches, 600 yards, and a touchdown, it doesn't look too good. You go 50 catches, 623, seven touchdowns. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, this guy was a big impact player for us, right? So I know we didn't score a lot, so I can't hold that against Conklin. But do not tell me that we should not draft Brock Bowers because we have Tyler Conklin on roster. This is a league. This is a league where you look for players that make you better at positions and can be impactful. Bowers fits that mold for me. 
I, yeah, I don't yeah. think like if if well, we would have like, stayed put, like, we, we like, had Elijah Moore. Uh-huh. If they were like, no, we just drafted Elijah Moore in round two. We don't need another receiver. We wouldn't have gotten Garrett Wilson. How did that work out? Where's Elijah Moore? Do you do you remember everybody cried when we um everybody screamed and cried when Marcus May when we didn't bring bring back Marcus May everybody screamed and cried like Marcus May the Jets have this way of they're we're still in this mode of a good player treating them and acting like they're a superstar now look yeah there's no of course Bowers would have to play slot anyway Buffalo's one hundred percent correct in this because yeah reality is that would be an acknowledgement like that's not. That shouldn't be debated or argued. Like we all know, if you you know if you know about Bowers, if you watched him, if you know how you know how he was utilized, he's not an inline tight end. You know he's going to be playing in the slot. He's going to be playing offline, right? He's a so, mismatch. So the the reality is, I like him in a, a twelve personnel. I like the fact that in a twelve personnel, you could have a Conklin or a Rucker on the field, and you could have Bowers on the field. Yeah. And, and and to me, the thought, the idea of having Conklin on the field with Bowers in the slot, Mike Williams and Garrett Wilson, you can't tell me that that's not going to put fear in the defense. That's like a freaking mismatch. How are you going to cover him? You, uh, uh, it's very few linebackers in football can have any chance to cover Bowers. He's four right. five speed. He's explosive. He's a great route runner. No matter what people want to say, he knows how to run routes. He's he's a natural receiver in a big giant, you know, not in a yeah. giant body, but in a bigger body. So it's a matchup nightmare. Now the question, the, yes. now the a legitimate concern that Jake Asman brought up today, and I agree with it, is: Do we trust our offensive coordinator to be able to utilize him? You hope because everything that we saw last year, we heard as soon as Aaron went down, they had to dumb down the offense. So how many plays were we not able to run because we didn't have a quarterback that the offense coordinator thought could execute those plays? There's probably pages and pages of the playbook that weren't even looked at because they knew Zach wouldn't do it. and I mean, minus the last two plays against the Giants where he made the best two throws of the year. And like, oh, we actually have to air this out. Oh, let's hit the, let's go to these pages. Boom, boom, game. So he was always good. It's going to be. He was always good when he did, when he got out of his head against Cleveland also, against Pittsburgh, when he was coming from behind in a rush and he was out of his head, didn't have to think. He played well. The problem with Zach Wilson is his head. He's a head case. Why is my phone making noise? You know, it's like if if Zach Wilson was in a situation where there was always a minute left or a minute and a half left and he's down, he's actually probably would have a great career. The problem is is he can't maintain it for an entire game because he gets into his head. He he, He also has like a half the route tree that he just can't make the throws for, which is a problem. Yeah. I got a question. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's something we got to talk about because it's fresh and it's in the news and it's coming up today. There's a story that came out that Robert Sala and Woody Johnson were in a heated discussion and looked like an argument. Now, Connor Hughes just tweeted something 12 minutes ago. There was no verbal argument between Robert Sala and Woody Johnson at the annual meeting reception. I know because I was at the party where this apparently happened, feet from Sala and Johnson, before Johnson and Jets contingent left. Woody took them out to dinner. Checked in with two sources at the dinner. Confirmed nothing happened there either. He then tweets, and I think this is really, really uh, important to process. Robert Sala has been grilled after gut-wrenching losses on the podium with fastball after fastball these last three years. Never once has he lost his cool. He receives justified criticism for a lot, but he always keeps composure publicly. You guys really think he's going to blow up at the owner of his team at a party filled with every GM, head coach, and owner in the NFL, along with every reporter covering these teams? I I don't get it. I think it's just like if we don't have the Jets in the fucking national spotlight, media wants to do it because they know that we have a psychotic fan base who's going to react to every time because the Jets we have a name fan gets base full of twiddle D's and twiddle dumbs. They're going to be all over Twitter and Facebook saying, why don't we just fire him? He's yelling at the owner. 
Why are they? They're embarrassing us because they will believe anything you feed them. They'll eat anything you feed them. They're, it's like it's it's. It's tiresome. I get more annoyed at these kind of stories because I know, oh, here it comes. Now we're going to have to watch the dumbest part of our fan base have their freaking three days of jumping up and down, throwing their tantrums because they believe anything that's in print without any critical thinking. And it, it just drives me mad. Let's listen to uh, a, a, a press that hates Aaron Rodgers' guts, that always attacks him. Let's listen to former employees, people who were fired from the team, and then say we have reliable sources and say the entire t team is in chaos and the entire locker room is in chaos and nobody likes Robert Sala and he's lost control of the team two weeks or a week after he won the freaking – um, or no one likes Aaron Rodgers two weeks after he won the freaking most inspiring player on the team award. You know, like, it's just like, there's no like thought process to any of this. It's like, don't believe anything unless it's a proven credible yeah. source. Agreed. Anybody that's, and you, you know, what's not a credible source, someone in the building, someone in the building is not a fucking source. Yeah. <laughs> that's like the dumbest thing in the world. Someone in the building told us. <laughs> Who cares? Right. You know how many people right. work in that building? <laughs> my, I'll tell, I'll tell you what my original thought was because this story came out about an hour after the news of Clowney signing with the Panthers came out. I was thinking maybe was Sala upset. Oh, thank you, Jets 830. I, I had to get touched up before I left on the road. Thank you. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. You're fine. You make me feel so sexy. Thank you. Um, I'm okay being a piece of meat if anyone else wants to compliment in the chat. Obviously, I'm the eye candy here on the show, and he's him. I'm not uh, eye candy. No. 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 I'll make you. I'll put you in the mood for eggs and eggs. There you go. You're. We, I, I'm the eye candy. Uh, Andy is candy, Andy. We got, we got to find something with candy for you. And you're just like, I want to go to 7-Eleven. This is actually a really good point by Wild Wave. It's a very, very good point. And it, it has, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot to pull from this question. And, and I mean, in this, this point, this take, and yeah. it makes a lot of sense. And that's, that's not anything against Brock Bowers. That's a statement of, why would the Jets suddenly want this type of player when they didn't want Kincaid? I don't know. I can't answer that. Here, where, where were we? 30 days, 29 days from night one. Um, some of the things that I, I – I can't answer that. I'm going to answer that with some questions because I don't know that you got to be really ear to the ground and, and involved in the Jets, to, I think, to really answer that. I'm curious to see what they do if they stay at 10 and if Bowers is available. Yeah, I'm curious too. I, I think, mean, I don't but, expect them to. I would be surprised if they took him. I really would. Agreed. For this like, reason. It's there. He's not their type of player. Yeah. I mean, it could be. I, one of those things that I'm going to hate is if Bowers goes before the jets and then the people who were screaming for Bowers will always be able to say, we would have took him if he was there. You don't fucking know that. But they just want to say it to say that they were right. I told you he was good. I told you he wouldn't make it. He, he, other teams wanted him. That's how good he is. You know, I don't want to hear that shit. I, I just want Joe Douglas to be right. Right. Like, as long as I, our, I think, like, as honest as to God, our, our, as long as our player is right. Our options right now at 10, if, if what I think Joe Douglas will do, not what Nick or Jeremy or any content creator wants, what I think Joe Douglas and Robert Sala would do at 10. I think if Neighbors or Odunze are there, I think there is a serious consideration to take another weapon and give Rodgers everything he needs and give him two 1A receivers, something he's never had. Uh, he's always had the guy, whether it was Jordy Nelson, whether it was uh, Devontae, 
And then it's been a nice complimentary cast. He's never had that guy, that guy, and even Mike Williams can do shit that they're not going to be able to do. It could be the most talented, and you add Brees in. And even if you keep Conklin, and he's your first tight end, you're looking at the best cast of weapons Rodgers has ever had. So I think that the wide receiver is in play. I think Bowers is in play if the receivers are gone because they think they want to add another unique weapon. Uh, I think Fashanu could be in play because everything we've heard from Dom uh, is that he might have the highest ceiling of everybody. Uh, so I think Alter Fashanu are in play. And I'll be honest with you guys, I still think a defensive lineman's in play, especially after losing out on Clowney, that the Jets were in. I think if Dallas Turner is there, and Dallas Turner, to some scouts, is better as a prospect than Jermaine Johnson was. Very similar. High motor, plays the run, relentless, doesn't stop, can get after the quarterback, has got multiple pass moves. Um, I think Dallas Turner is the fourth guy in play if he's there. That's at 10. Obviously, if we move, it changes everything. But at 10, I think you're going to hear one of those names. Now, I know I threw up a lot, but I'm curious to see if Bowers, Alt, Turner are there. Where the fuck do they go? I I I think trading back is an option, but I I don't think anybody can say with certainty that's going to be the pick for the Jets. And anyone trying to do that right now is just being retarded. Right, and the the thing is, Buffalo right now, what Buffalo is saying is the exact reason why I want to trade back, because we have a depth issue in two major places, and I'm only focused on the offense because the defense I still know is going to be good, even though there are things we could do to make it better. But we've proven with the defense we could pull guys off the street and shut down Philly. Right, the right. defense is the right. defense. Right, so I'm not going to sit there and worry about the, uh, of the defense as much. I mean, the offense is what was historically bad last year. That's clearly what we have to fix. But wide receiver is not even sneaky to me. I mean, it's like, yeah, Garrett Wilson or Mike, Mike Williams is coming back from an ACL. Like, you can't – like, we can't be one injury away from having Lazardus WR2. That's crazy. So we definitely need another receiver. To me – We definitely need another tackle because it's the same thing. Tyron Smith doesn't play a full season. So the trade back is so inviting because there's a guy named Fontenot who's actually perfect for us because he could play all four but center, right? So he gives you everything. Plus, you can get him at 15. You could get him at 16. So you, if, if we were to trade back and get him at 15 or 16, Get ourselves a second round pick. We get Fontenot. In the second round, you definitely could get a receiver. I, I mean, you got to pick right. Not every receiver works out, but there's going to be one of the available receivers in the second round. The right guy is going to be sitting there. Well, hopefully, we pick him, but this is a much deeper draft in, in wide receiver than in this tackle. There are no tackles outside the top 25 that we could rely on to plug and play. But wide receivers, Roman Wilson, Possibly Lad McConkey. He's going to go pretty early. He might go first round, though. But you never know. If we get a second round pick, maybe we trade up and we snag him. Yeah. Um, and then there's who Adnoy Mitchell is like a bubble kind of guy, late first round, early second round. There's a there are some guys, you know, Xavier Leggett. There are some guys who can come into this league and possibly play and contribute. Uh, Corley. There's a, there's a bunch of wide receivers that might be there in the second round for us to choose from. I think we need two picks. So at least we have a chance. We have a chance to address the lack of depth in two areas, the offensive line and the wide receiver room. And I'm all for that. I'm all for that. If you want to trade back and get a lineman, then you want to take McConkey and put him in the slot, I'm, I, I would love that. That's a, that's. We have to improve the offense because I don't think the offense is good enough. You, you, what you saw in the NFL this year, you saw an AFC championship that had the Ravens and the Chiefs 17 to 10. You saw a Super Bowl that ended regulation 1919. Our defense is good enough to play those games. Like, if we can get to 23, 24 points on a consistent basis or more, we're going to win a lot of football games. 
if we can get an offense that matches the defense and now we got this power line that can put games away late with Brees and just run the ball down your fucking throat, that's awesome. I, I, that's what I want. I want to do what the Chiefs did to us. Remember what the Chiefs did to us when they came here October 1st? They got the ball back, and they converted, and they converted, and they converted, and they converted, and then the game was over. I think they got the ball back with eight and a half minutes, and we never touched it again. You can argue about the interception call being shit. We know that. But once they got the ball, even though they didn't have a great day on offense, they were able to put the game away. Mm-hmm. And that's the type of team I want to be. I want to get the ball late in the game and punch you in the fucking mouth and just keep getting conversions and keep getting conversions. Oh, don't get me started on that. You're going to get my blood pressure up. The new kickoff thing is going to make me sick. I hate changes like that. Because it's like changing the game, man. It's, it's like my favorite sport. I love it the way it is. I got to adjust to this new freaking weird kickoff kind of thing, you know? I hate that crap, man. Yeah, I I don't know what they're doing, man. It's like every time one guy gets injured, we have to change the rule. Like, okay, you don't want guys tackling and grabbing and pulling down because they can get hurt. Now what do you do? Now you run through them, you drive through them, and you drive them to the fucking ground, and then that'll be a penalty because somebody breaks their collarbone because someone landed on them. Like, you can't keep changing the rules. These guys sign up to fucking play football. They know there's a chance to get hurt when you get tackled. That's it. Owners are crying because they pay so much money now for these players that they want to protect their investments because it's the owners approving that shit. Well, it'll cease to be football. If it keeps going the way it's going, it'll stop being football. I mean, it sucks. Injuries suck. We all want the injuries to, like, find a way to lessen the injuries, but not at the expense of, like, tackling. (laughs) Tackling is part of the game. You got to, you know, and, like, it's, it's, and and we've already seen, like, situations where it's not the defender's fault. Like, they can't help if suddenly the guy with the ball jumps in the air. Now you get hit with a, lo- a low hit. Or if they change angles and suddenly your helmet hits their helmet. When can that you, turn your, uh, can you turn your phone off? I'm panicking thinking my phone's going off. And even though I have it off, it's still making sound. And now it's you, you putz. Well, maybe something's happening in the world of football. Like and we Connor Hughes know. is arguing about food with Costello and Samini. Well, That's I can't be left out of that. If he's, <laughs> if he's arguing about food, I have to jump in and resolve the argument. You know, Connor always puts the food, and then Samini replies, wait, there was fried cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> I love how Connor takes like show, like takes pictures of the food. But with me, it would be, if I was Connor Hughes, it would be, there'd be pictures of me eating the food. <laughs> You're Costello. <laughs> but uh, I thought we were going to get to be part of that in the senior ball. Like, I'm gonna, like, I hope he takes pictures of the food that they're giving us. But he didn't because it was shit, and I knew he wouldn't. It was like they were giving us this packed freaking food. It was so bad. I made Dom C. stop and take me to Whataburger. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'll pay for good food but, and, and not take free bad food. That's my older brother would do. My older brother, what are you, crazy? They're giving away food for free. And it's like it could be shit. And he'd be, be happily, happily eat it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I would rather pay for good food. Then get free food that I don't like. I'm like food is too important to me. I don't play. I don't play games when it comes to that stuff. Do you know who uh, the biggest fan of this new tackling rule is? What's that? Sauce Gardner, because now he has another reason not to attempt to tackle on the open field. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I love Sauce, but he will not. He he makes business decisions. That Josh Jacobs fucking play kills me still. And then he jogged down the field after it to not even try to recover the fumble. Yeah. Uh, that that ate the, me. To, to, to I love the, sauce. I know what sauce is, but don't turn into Dion where you don't even try to make tackles. What's the point of going into the middle of the field if you're not going to try to tackle? And you go, yeah. crazy. O-line, wide receiver, safety, running back. I feel our needs are in order. Not a tight end. He's got – he. I get he's special, but I just don't think he's for us. Well, he might not be for us. I mean, if they take him, believe me, you're going to find ways to be excited about this guy. I mean, there there are yeah. very exciting elements to his game. 
But if they just take him at 10, man, it does nothing for the offensive line, you know, obviously. And there's not going to be anyone there at 72. So, I mean, like, there, there's problems with just, you know, there, there, there's a really big downside. There's a really big downside. So we'll see. We got the rest of free agency. You never know. A Dave Bacatieri might be on the team by the time the season starts, you know. And then we have can, – can Bacatieri and Smith both combined play 17 games? I'm never correcting you. Just Bacatieri, 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 Bacala, Bacala, Bacala. Bobby Bacala. <laughs> Bobby Bacala. Davey Bacala. Bobby Bacala. <laughs> You know who I'm talking about. So the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> the I'm Bobby team. Bacala, and you look like Uncle Junior. <laughs> Someone's gonna phonetically spell it out for me. You know that's coming. So <laughs> he feels the same way about ladies. Bach and Fiari. Bach Fiari. You pay for what you get. <laughs> I could tell a really bad joke right now, but I'm not going to because if Jocelyn hears, she'll divorce me. <laughs> Text it to me. I'll say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> As you just saw firsthand, I have no filter. Myj. Yeah, we tweet. just read those tweets uh, about five minutes ago. I yeah, and I, I, I mean, but it's, it, but it's still a good point, like that we 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 kind of forgot and we dropped. So thanks for bringing that back up. What is with the fucking negative press? Like, what is it? They know why do they keep also. doing this to us? I mean, they're they will not leave this team alone. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Oh, I was saying it earlier. The news came out about an hour after Clowney to the Panthers. Do you think maybe it was a discussion of, like, Salah was just like, God damn, I really wanted that guy. And somebody sees it from a distance and looks like Salah's bitching at Woody. You know what I mean? But, like, fuck, we could have used – you know what I mean? Like, you just show it, voicing not displeasure at Woody, displeasure to Woody. Yeah. Something that Dane does every night. He voices his displeasure to his Woody. But I, I think it could have just been, been a passionate Vinny, That's right. Vinny rebranded himself. I was told that he was doing that. NYJTV. Uh, what's up, Vinny? Good to see you. Good hello. to see you. Good hello, see you. hello. I like that Connor Hughes told the truth right away and cleared it up. He said, oh, I have the opportunity to play yeah. the hero. <laughs> Wait, is Connor the hero or is Connor like if anyone's gonna break a negative story about our team, it's gonna be us? <laughs> and the whole media was like, Yeah, fuck yeah. this, we'll deny this story, and then we'll say it happened tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll re-break it. Oh, just found out there was a moment that I wasn't able to follow them in the hallway, and that's when it happened. <laughs> yeah. I almost feel like I if if Robert Sala got into a heated argument with Eve Johnson, I almost I almost feel like this is what it would be. Woody, back the fuck off. You're killing this team. Just go back to wherever the fuck it is you go and don't come fucking back. Because every time you stick your nose in it, you fuck this team up. That's what I think he'd be saying to him. <laughs> it's like just stay out of it. Like, you don't know what you're doing. You totally took all the value away from Zach Wilson. If there was any chance in any market for him at all, Woody, Woody Johnson took that freaking market and crushed it in his hand and threw it in the freaking garbage. Let me, as the owner of the team, say, we didn't have a backup quarterback. <laughs> like, so stupid. And now he's trying to pull back on it and say he's a valuable asset. It's a little yeah. too late for that. You're right. You know? You're right. Let me ask you this. Yeah. They were clearly in on Clowney. They they said yeah. that we had him and we didn't want him to leave. Yeah. Do you think that – how much do you think that improves the percentage of D-line could be in in round one? We know that this organization, this GM, this head coach, love drafting D-linemen. And I'll never forget Salah's first year, the Mike White game against the Bengals. Quinn and Williams made the play late in the game to stop them. And Robert Salah said, and I quote, we will go as this D-line goes. That will be our driving force with this team. And yes, we lost Huff. Yes, McDonald's coming up. 
You saw how much they value D-line with the defensive tackles that they signed. And I think they're looking to get another guy on the edge. You think they do that? But who free you agency? Get, but think about it. If, okay, so I think free – because what I think – I think what they want – is they were they want somebody to rotate with JFN and JFM and Clemens. Right? They need an early down edge. I don't think they want Clemens in there that much. I think they like if they like him, he's okay. He's I don't think Clemens there. makes the team. I think Clemens is a cut. I don't know about that, but I don't I don't think they're good. I think they want to get better than him. I think that he doesn't give them what they need. And I mean, I think that, with the I Cleveland think, Browns fans and then with Deion Dawkins, that's not what they want to be. I mean, I, I know one thing. Clowney was not going to be a replacement for Huff. He was going to take snaps from Clemens. There's no question about that. So they're definitely not super high on Clemens. <laughs> I mean, if they are if they were willing to even spend $8, 9000000 million on a guy to, to come in and take snaps away from him. Um, the problem is, let's say you draft one of these guys with the 10th pick, right? Who would that be? Dallas? Or Versailles, right? Like yeah. those are the two guys, the two main guys. Which, like, what are you doing with them? Are is their game scheme to be? Because there's, they need a guy in the early down. So that's what uh, is that? Are they good run stoppers? Are they edge setters? Are they just good at creating pressure? Because where are we gonna have another pass rush specialist? How valuable is that when you already have JJ and you already have McDonald's? You're gonna have a third guy rotating around getting minimal yeah. slots, or is it gonna, or is one of those players someone they believe could be a first, second down guy and not only get to the quarterback, but they're gonna be a guy who could help stop the run and set the edge? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up right now. Or though JJ can move into that role. If you if the, if you get a if you get a guy that's like a beast pass rusher, you know what I mean, like a, a rush, you know, that that could disrupt like crazy and everything with McDonald, you could have JJ play the early downs. JJ, that's the one great thing about JJ is he gives you everything. JJ is like is good at everything. He could he could he could seal the edge. He could get to the you know he's a pass rusher. He's every con, he's every part of the position. Yeah, you're you're right. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Let me see right now. I'm going to pull up Turner's scouting report. Dallas Turner. Sports a lean, flexible frame with elite proportional length and reach. Has an uncommon combination of hyper elite explosiveness and bend capacity. Can leverage elite burst and length into devastating bouts of raw power capacity. Improved play strength in 2023, which showed with his ability to fight through blocks. Flashes high-end rush nuance with euro steps, cross chops, swipes, and manipulation. High motor albatross in pursuit. Has the versatility to disguise rushers and cover flats. Weaknesses can be more consistent with the pass rush plan. Still improving at stacking secondary moves off of initial power exertions. Still has room to improve lower body strength to prevent run game displacement. I mean. That's where he's got to improve. But that all of those things, though, are teachable. Right, he's got the he's got the ta- he's got the physical capabilities of learning right. to go from one to counter down. moves are teachable, right? That's all coaching. You're right, but is it year one? Is it stick him in and rely on him right away? Worth taking him and leaving and ignoring the worst offense historical make it one of the worst offenses in NFL history. I don't think we've ignored it though. We brought in Mike Williams and three starters on the offensive line who are all starters on elite offensive line programs. Yeah. So I don't think we could say ignored it. Maybe not ignored it, but I think it needs some young blood. I'll agree with that. That offensive line, man, like, you know, if you assume you're going to sign AVT, like re-sign him, extend him, whatever, and AVT is going to be here to stay. If he stays healthy and you have Joe Tipman, it'd be nice to add a third guy to that, that combination. You know, that's going to be around be. for a while. Start it building that. Be. Start building that core. You know, and let's use the argument that everyone's used for the offensive line and apply it to the defensive line. JFM could be gone after this year. Thomas is gone after this year. Kinlaw's gone after this year. Fatu's gone after this year. 
There's a lot of guys on the D-line gone, as much as we're saying there's guys on the offensive line who are only one year. So, But we could easily address defensive tackle in the draft. You can. Like I'm saying in the third round at 72. You can. 72, there's going to be, you know, there's so it's, it's a great year to, to, to load up on defensive tackle in the set, in the, in the fourth round. Yeah. You know, I'll say this. Hmm? If you had a combination of JJ, JFM, McDonald, and either Turner or Verse, I'm happy. I'm not going to be throwing a fit if we add another guy who can get to the quarterback. I'm not. I'm not going to be upset you, with that. You, you, because you upset, but don't, then there's going to be Jet fans. You know that you're going to be fighting them off. There's going to be. I don't care. I don't care because when you look at the Philly game at the end, what did we do? We fucking brought it and we won the game because we brought the pressure late in the game because we rotate everybody and Tony Adams was able to jump around because he knew that we were going to get home quick enough. The Quincy Williams blitz in Denver. We had to seal the game. We were fresh. We blitzed the guy that we hadn't blitzed the whole day. Denver didn't even think he was coming. We got the fumble, and we won the game. The defense is going to be able to win the games late because we're going to be in more games. I just named two games that the defense won out of seven, sealing it late in the game. you got to give these guys a chance, and I don't think in a league right now where you only have to get the 20 points and you win the Super Bowl, and you get to 18 points and you win the AFC, don't think that they're going to let the defense fall. They're going to keep a top five defense. They're oh, not yeah. going to let this defense fall. They'll say with Rodgers, we can be a middle-of-the-pack offense, and that's good enough. Yeah. No, I mean, look, there's no question. We hold ourselves to a standard of that everybody wants every player to be a star, and everybody wants every part of our, our team to be in the elite. And that's not often reality, even with Super Bowl teams. Like, there's often a better side of the ball for every team. Yeah. You know, there's often a better side of the ball. And then, you know, one of the things that changes it, and I think you said it, and it's a lot's going to depend on Aaron Rodgers and how much he has left in the tank. Because yeah. you could have a great defense and an offense that has some holes, but if you have a great quarterback like we see in Kansas City, we see with Buffalo – I mean, you take you take Buffalo, Josh Allen out of Buffalo. Like you pull him out of the game. Let's say Buffalo's offense is tra- shit. It is total trash if you take Josh Allen away. Yeah. Right, and then they're not doing shit. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you think about that, that's why it's so weird that fans are so mad at the Jets. Well, we lost our quarterback. If it happened to Buffalo, they'd be shit too. I don't even know if they'd win seven games. No. I don't know if they'd be able to go seven and ten if they lost Josh Allen. No. And then Fuck if you them. take and then if you take away half of their offensive line and they have to start 13 different offensive lines, I don't know if what they, I don't think they'd be able to do anything. So there there is some credibility to that thinking to say maybe what the hope is is Carter Warren could come in if he has to come in for a few games. Max Mitchell could come in if he has to play for a few games. Although we don't know any of this as a fact that they're not going to still do more because there's plenty of time in free agency to do more. There's plenty of guys out there that can give us some depth. But the but maybe the feeling is we don't have to be the best offense. We just have to be able to score and move the ball and be respectable with an elite defense and the best running back in the NFL or, or a top three, you know, a top three in the NFL running back. With, you know, I mean, maybe that's going to be enough. I know we look damn good when the offensive line and the few games that we were able to repeat the offensive line and come back with the same offensive line two, three weeks in a row. It barely happened. But when it did, they looked fine. Like health is more important than the players. That's yeah. what I've learned. I've learned more important than who you're starting and who you sign with the offensive line. The more important thing is, is they stay healthy and you have the same offensive line week to week. Of course, because then at least of you'll course. get respectability. You know, you'll get like they're gonna the, like the consistency will help them not miss assignments. At least they'll learn how to work together and operate as a unit. I mean, most yeah. of the big plays against us, a lot of them, where people said, "Oh my God, nobody even blocked them." It's missed assignments. Yep. 
because you had guys playing who weren't even on the damn team in training camp. You see, but this this is this is not completely true. Like this is a, a not completely true statement. And here's what I mean. Yes, they lost their two tackles. They had two injuries. But they kept, their guards stayed healthy and they did not start thir- 13 different offensive lines. They started five different offensive lines. You know what I mean? Or four different offensive lines. Like they replaced players, their replacement players didn't get hurt. Like if we, if you look at our offensive line, if you look at our replacement players, if they wouldn't have gotten hurt, the first guys we put in there, we it wouldn't have been as bad. Like part of what made it so bad was that our replacement players got hurt. <coughs> we had guys named Hanson and guys named Newman playing. I never even heard of these guys. You never heard of Newman? Thing, you call yourself a Seinfeld fan? And, and the worst thing is, is every time a different player would actually play okay and be, oh my God, the guy actually played okay, they would get hurt and it would be a new guy the next week. So Cleveland's not the same thing. And then let's, what happened to Cleveland in the playoffs, the first game? Like what happened to him? Everybody's acting like Cleveland was so good. What was Cleveland's record the last eight games of the year? And then look at the playoffs. Cleveland was not that good. <laughs> They were like, everybody's acting like Cleveland was this star team. They weren't. Their record wasn't much better than ours. If you look at the last eight games of the year, I forgot what it was. Someone made a really good point. If you look at the last eight games of the year, Cleveland was not a good team. Yeah, Buffalo says right now they they started five. They were five and one with Watson. Right. So then it's right. And Buffalo is the one to say it. So I want to give credit to the right person. Buffalo made that great point. I think I saw it on Twitter. It was an excellent point. If you look at the Cleveland, I mean, if you look at the Cleveland Browns, they also were not good. Their season was side railed because they lost their starting quarterback and they lost offensive linemen. You know, now, my favorite. They did, not get hit ne- they did not get hit nearly as bad as we got hit. They didn't because at least their two replacements stayed healthy. We would have been much better if the first two guys we brought in off the bench would have stayed healthy. And what was that? Dwayne Brown came out. Beckton went over to left tackle, and then uh, who's right? AVT went AVT out. AVT went to right tackle. Yeah, Tittman went to guard. Out, right, and then Tittman got hurt for a few games, and then Conor McGovern was out. I mean, Wes came in, and then Wes was out. I mean, everybody that came in, we just kept getting hurt. There was even another guy. His name started with O, Ojubu or Okabi, and he got hurt. Everybody we put in there was getting hurt. But, All right, I'm going to address this one. Let me take this one. My point is that it's inaccurate to blame injuries for the Jets' miserable yeah. line performance last year. All right, let me let me ask this: We were five and two and four and three the last two seasons before we got the injury three and beyond with the offensive line. What else would you blame? With the worst quarterback play in football, we started the seasons four and three and five and two until we got the injury three and beyond. It's ridiculous to say it's not accurate. Of course, it's accurate. Of course, losing your starter, starting quarterback, where the entire offense was built around that quarterback, is going to hurt your offense. Of course, and we were still winning, like you said. But then to lose all those offensive linemen, like what are you talking about? We have to look in history at teams that were decimated with injuries and what's happened to them. You think the New York Jets are the first team to suck because of injuries? We've seen teams collapse and fall apart all the time because of injuries. You get to your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth backup. You're not going to be good. Find in history a team that did well and had a winning team that started 13 different offensive lines in 17 games. Find me team in history. Well, a 16 game, right? So let's say 12 out of 16 games. Find a team in history that had to start 12 different offensive lines in 16 games and tell me what their records were. Hey, you got a new member. Cool. Bobby. That's, that, that, that's my challenge. Go, go and do your research. Find me a team that started 12 different alignments of the offensive line in 16 games that did without their starting quarterback who did good that you could say the Jets, it's inaccurate to say that this doesn't impact the football team. I mean, like you got to understand football. I mean, if you've played football, you'd understand when you start putting different pieces in, it changes everything. Football is a team sport. You can't just plug and play people and expect it to be the same. 
It's all about teamwork. It's all about chemistry. When you start plucking guys and putting new guys in each week, how do you expect them to perform well? Let me ask you a question because you you are someone who enjoys food more than anyone I know. Say you go get a sandwich. Say you get a chicken parm, right? And the bread is nice and fresh. It's crispy. It's toasted. The chicken cutlets are sliced thin. They're breaded to perfection. The cheese is fresh. It's melted. But the sauce is shit. Ruins the whole sandwich, right? Yeah. Our offensive line was shit, so it ruins the whole offense. It you what? can't just point at one performance area and say these guys are bad. So everything else, okay. I I don't get the argument. I don't get what the point of the discussion is. I'd like to change it to be honest. <laughs> right. Well, it just it doesn't make any sense. It's the, like because that's like that's we were winning games. We, we played with Kansas City with our starting offensive line last year. We beat Philadelphia with our starting offensive line last year. Right. It was when the offensive line, AVT, went down for the second year in a row. That's when it started. When you get to your third injury, no team is going to succeed. I want to be like Buffalo one year. Buffalo last year, the only time I think Dawkins, ironically, had to go out on a primetime game late in the season and get like his arm taped up. And and that was the that was like the most. But everyone started for them. I want one year like that. Just give me one year with a healthy offense, especially let it be this year, please, Jesus. And let's see what we can be. I I think we haven't had the greatest talent. The quarterback position has been poor. The offensive line has gone through tremendous injuries. Right. And and that, by the way, when I say take Josh Allen out of Buffalo, I didn't even say the real thing for the Jets. The Jets had, no quarterback like Zach Wilson. I mean, and I don't care about the truth is if it hurts their feelings. He was not even, he's not even a rosterable quarterback. Like he's, he's not in any way competent. Yeah. He is the worst quarterback to ever start and play for three seasons and still start games. Like, I don't know if there's ever been worse that's played his 30 games. Like he is, is brutally bad and is incompetent. So if you don't think playing with 12 different, 13 different offensive lines and a quarterback that's not even functional most of the time that he's on the field, sometimes he was like, okay, against Kansas City, who knows why? But he, he'd get into his head and he was completely unfunctional or in infunct- Like you tell me how replacing that with back with Aaron Rodgers yeah. and hopefully, like I said, maintaining a healthy offensive line or healthier is not going to change everything for that offense. Of course it is. And my favorite trivia question from I mean, last I mean, what year. Is the pro- what is Rifka saying? What? Brees Hall's not good? Garrett Wilson's not good? Conklin's not know. good? I mean, what is she saying? Think about the stupidity of what you're saying. You're saying that these star players aren't good because you're saying, well, it's not just the offensive line and the quarterback. What are you talking about? Every other part of our offense is good. What other part of our offense wasn't good that's so incompetent? Obviously. What was wrong with our offense was the quarterback and the offensive line. Obviously, because it wasn't Garrett Wilson. He wasn't the problem. Brees Hall wasn't the problem. We wouldn't have been the the most historically worst offense in freaking history with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall in it. I mean, give me a break. We had no offensive line and we had no quarterback. Do you know my favorite trivia question from the football year 2023? What? With the year being no NFL season has ever had more players start a game at quarterback than in 2023. Do you know how many of those backup quarterbacks made the final eight in the playoffs? How many? If you don't have your quarterback, you don't have a chance. All right. I mean, Good quarterbacks in this league can make a difference with the line, can make a difference with the receivers, can make a difference in field position, can draw guys off sides on third downs, can do things that guys like Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle can't. I, I want to see this team healthy. That's all I ask for. I think we have enough talent with a complete team to do and finish the job. Just we let won, us just be healthy. We, we would have won even with the offensive line as brutal as it was. We would have won 10 games at least last year if there was any competency at quarterback at all. Yeah. 
if it wasn't Zach Wilson or a, 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 a you know a Trevor coming in, he, even he got a little bit better as the weeks went on. But like those first games he played, where he just couldn't do it. I mean, and then who's the, who did we use Boyle? I mean, like what we had at quarterback was Boyle so, rules. It was so horrendously bad. But there were three games where if there was the Raider game, the first New England game, like if there was any competency at quarterback, even with the offensive line, if everything else stayed the same, we easily win 10 games. Easily. It's not even a question. That's 10 games. If we had not if we had Aaron Rodgers, if we had any kind of competency at all, uh, Jacoby Brissett, any kind of just like what you saw at Cleveland. Cleveland. Got some competency out of out of out of Flacco, and you saw what happened. They were able to hold off and do enough to make the playoffs. They couldn't do much in the playoffs, but they were able to make it. It's the same thing. We would have been that team. And do, do does Joe Douglas have to take some accountability for not having a backup quarterback? Yes, but we can't change the past now. Right now, we hope that Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, and we're going to make the playoffs because we would have made the playoffs last year. We probably would have made the playoffs two years ago if we had competent quarterback. We didn't. But it's not an issue if Rodgers is in there. If Rodgers is in there, it's a different team. It's not an issue. There's no comparison. You can't compare anything when you went with a position like quarterback. So I don't know what the argument is. We are definitely a playoff team last year if Aaron Rodgers doesn't go down 100%. Okay. There's no question in the world. And then nobody is crying and nobody is screaming how bad we are. We'd only be saying, how do we take the next step to go even further this year? That's I don't I mean. understand how we had a winning record before we got the three injuries and beyond if we were so fucking bad. Yeah. The only stat I fucking care about is winning. I don't care about somebody's rating. I don't give a shit. She's still I'm there to on. win games. Still if you're rambling. five and two. She's still rambling on, but can't, but can't debate the fact that we had 13 different offensive yeah, lines. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, who cares if the, it was the same three? It was the same three. Blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Two out of five is 40%. Can you do math? If you score 60 on your test, is your mother happy? Was that good grades in school? 40% of your offensive line constantly changing matters. Uh, I mean, Harlan, how are we winning games if we're so bad? The last two years, we've had a bad offensive line to start the year, but we're still five and two and four and three to start the season. Maybe it's good coaching. And then when the injuries happen, because we don't have the most talented offense, maybe. What what is it then? I'm just throwing out ideas because obviously I'm not the smartest person in the room. How do you win games if you have such a bad line? How do you win games in the NFL? Someone tell me that. Put that answer in the chat. Anybody. How were we five and two and four and three the last two years to start? With such a shit offensive line and the worst quarterback playing football, answer that. Anybody? I'll wait. Obviously, they did something right. We had a great. Defense. How, how did we have a winning we had record? Some great special. How did we have a winning game. record? How did we play with the Chiefs? How did we have a winning record? How? Everything was so bad. Everything was awful. It's worse in the league. How were we winning games? Right. I mean, but it, what what's, what what gets me is the negativity of just wanting to believe that to sit there and say, "Oh, we're so bad, we're so bad," blah 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 blah, and it's just excuses. And and to say that when you've never played football, to sit there and say that, and it's like it doesn't matter that you never played football because you don't have to have played football to understand this. But if you're saying it. And you've never played football, it's very clear you've never played football because you have no idea what it's like in the trenches of an offensive line. Like, absolutely none. Like, you have no idea. You ever see rowing, boats, you know, the crew? You have no idea how important it is that those five men know and instinct, especially in the system we play, especially in a zone, especially especially in a zone blocking scheme when your offense is designed for moving around and picking up blocks and picking up different zones, depending on the play. How many plays did we see break down because they couldn't do it because they were guys who were on this, the team for seven days to sit there and say that it doesn't matter. Like, what are you talking about? 
It's affected every team in the NFL for years. Injuries. It kills seasons. We're not the first team to have our season destroyed because of injuries. It happens all the time. It literally happens all the time. See, teams have shitty seasons because of injuries. <laughs> I want to. I want to discuss this. This sounds more fun. I think the defense is going to take a step back. We lost 16 sacks and 97 pressures between Jefferson and Huff. Huff was the closer. I disagree, and here's why. We're going to have more leads. And more leads means the more pass rushing attempts. When the other team isn't afraid of your offense, they don't have to take chances. They don't have to throw the ball late. A lot of teams were just punting it, knowing that we couldn't score most of the season last year, right? So – We're going to have more pass rush opportunities. Therefore, the pressures and the sacks are going to go up. Everything we talked about last offseason, building up to it, maybe having a game where we were up 20 to 3 at halftime. Now a team has to go into full pass mode the whole second half, a lot like we've done. Why we give up so many sacks is because we're coming from behind and they're trying to come. We're playing from behind in so many games. That's why we give up more than we actually do. Uh, I think you're going to see the numbers be even better because it's going to be more pass rush opportunities in third and fourth quarters. Like you saw at the end of the Denver game when Quincy blitzed and we sealed it. Like you saw at the end of the Philly game when we knew we had to get home and Tony Adams was able to jump around. You're going to see more opportunistic football on the defense because they're going to be able to play aggressive because they're not shit scared of their offense not doing anything. Um, here's my, 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 I just wanted to say one take on that. We didn't, we, yeah, we lost 16 sacks, I guess, if you say between those players, but one thing we're not talking about is how many of those snaps is McDonald's going to take? And why are we assuming that McDonald's, McDonald's not going to get all those sacks? Right. I mean, and we got, and I think you're hundred percent right. We got a million reasons why as a team, we're going to have more opportunity to get lots of sacks and everybody's going to benefit. But, you know, having leads, obviously. Um, When you're down in a lot of games and you're not scoring points, the other team doesn't have to take chances. They're going to just be conservative. That's what they did. There are a lot of teams that played very conservative against us. No mistakes. But when Philly was tied with us and got aggressive and kept trying to punch the ball, what happened? We, we, We kicked our ass defensively and created turnovers. So I think that a lot of those sacks are going to go to McDonald's. I don't think that these guys are inventing or making this up. Their jobs are on the line. And if you watch McDonald's and you actually watch the film, he was fantastic. For a rookie player, he was absolutely yeah. fantastic on film. Small sample, but very good signs. He had some weight. Very uh, good flashes. I, want, I, I got to adjust this. This is starting to bother me. I don't want to get ticked off. I got my mother got rushed to a fucking hospital today, and I'm five states away, and I'm we come on here to have a happy show, and all of a sudden everyone's arguing. Yeah, we only scored the four touchdowns or whatever the fucking number was in those games, but we went four and three. We scored 22 win. We lost to Dallas. We lost to the Patriots. We lost to the Chiefs with 20. We beat the Broncos with 31. I know one was a defensive touchdown, so we scored 24. Eagle game, we scored 20. The Giant game, when McGovern, Schweitzer, and I think one other person got hurt, we only scored 13. Notice now we're past injury number three on the offensive line. And, four and, and, three. and who, who oh. looks at rankings of an offensive oh. line after two games? We fucking Fuck the rankings. Dallas. I care about the fucking scoreboard. The scoreboard is the only we, fucking we, stat we played, that matters. We played Dallas, so who gives a shit? We the played scoreboard Dallas the second is game the game. only fucking stat that matters, and I'm not someone who's just going to write articles about individual players and their performances because it's fucking boring to me. I care well, about I the team a as a whole. Score. Well, wait, let me let me go from here. <laughs> this is when the Giant game, McGovern and Schweitzer went out. So now we're past injury number three. Charger game, oh, six points. Raider game, 12 points. Bills game, six points. Dolphins game, 13 points. Falcons game, eight points. Texans game, somehow we put up 30 against a playoff team. I, I That was the Zach Wilson, Mike White game. That game just doesn't make sense. Dolphins game, zero. Commanders game, I think there was a touchdown and a block punt right there, but we scored 30 in that game. Couldn't do anything offensively in the second half. Browns game, 20. One was a defensive touchdown. 
And the final game in the snow was 17, the Brees game. Do you notice how many games were 13 points or less after we got the injury three? Our offensive line wasn't good enough at full strength. I don't care about their individual rankings. I don't give a fuck because they play as a unit. So when you get that many injuries on the line, your performance dips. That's why we went from four and three to not being able to score at all. So improving the offense, having them the offensive line, having them being there consistently will allow everyone else to do their job better. I don't know why the fuck this has turned into a fucking argument. <laughs> I mean, it's like so it's I feel like it makes, people want to fucking argue to argue to push their it, agenda. It, it makes no sense. It makes no sense because it's like clearly, clearly, it matters when your starting quarterback that you built your whole offense around gets hurt the fourth play of the season. Clearly, it matters when by week two, Joe Tipman had to come in. No, it doesn't because our third tackle was bad. That's all that matters. <laughs> I mean, but Dwayne Brown was playing injured the first two weeks. Like, so she's acting like, oh, but we were healthy and had our starters. He was playing hurt. We knew that. We found that out. He was playing injured. Like, you just can't pretend that things aren't real. Oh, it's excuses. You know what? Everything is excuses. If, if someone giving you a reason why something hap is happening is an excuse, then everything's an excuse. But the reality is, is we were playing with an injured tackle. Eventually, they realized he can't go. There's no way he's going to be able to move on. He, he could not perform accurately or, or well enough. So they put freaking Be Becton in there. It's not their fault that Becton came back for the two years and needed – like, I don't know that he's going to suck his whole year, but it's like it was his year back after two years. After an Achilles. So that's it. He wasn't good, especially after he sprained his ankle when he was even worse at the end. So that's that. But the whole inside, we had a rookie jumping around playing different guard positions. Connor McGovern, we lost. He was one of our most solid available guys. I mean, how many times can we talk about this? We, I mean, at the end of the day, you could sit there and say how many people started the season and how bad we were in the beginning. We started 13 different offensive lines in 17 games. If you can't acknowledge that, then I can't talk to you. Because if you can't acknowledge that 13 different offensive lines in 17 games makes an impact and say it doesn't matter and it shouldn't because three of the players were steady starters at the position, you're out of your mind. I mean, that's like, it's just like, I can't sit there and talk to someone who doesn't understand the game of football. Like, it's just stupid because you could read a box score and read an article, good, write an article, good for you. What the fuck do I have to be ashamed of? I'll Give me your fucking email. I'll send you the link. Come defend yourself. I don't know what you're uptight about and saying we should be ashamed of ourselves. Because we're not for. kissing your ass like everybody else. Because everybody runs and, oh, oh, look at that. She works with Joe Blewett and blah, blah, blah. And everybody wants to worship and kiss her ass. But if you're going to say stupid shit and say that it doesn't matter and say there was nothing wrong with our offensive line, it was just bad players, be ashamed then, yeah, we're going to respond to that because it's stupid shit. Be ashamed of ourselves. It's the same thing. PFF writes lots of articles too, and they had to be ashamed their... of ourselves. We have to be ashamed of uh, ourselves. We're ashamed of ourselves. We just don't we... write numbers and put out an article with no interaction with people, and right. then just pop up on a show to to attack them. Listen, right. I'm, I, like, I'm you're not... wrong about the offensive line. Like the, the offensive line, I don't give a fuck about their individuality. I care about the collection. And even though they were bad, they were still winning games when we were there. I don't know what I have to be ashamed about. But I'm glad I'm not a fucking piece of shit. So you could call me ashamed for saying that. Fine. I don't care because you're nobody to me. You're nothing to me. You're no one in the jet world to me and the majority of our chat. So get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, you it's want just the link? Like you want to defend yourself over just coming in here and trying to be whatever the fuck you're being? Fine. Take no, the fucking link. Come, come on. She'll, she'll not, block she'll the fucking on the channel. Block talk. me. Whatever. I leave Green Bean Show and Talking Jets Show when I see her name pop up in the fucking chat. And they kiss her ass. Unbearable. And they kiss her ass because she's part of that fucking X Factor. Of so everybody's People got to can't form a fucking opinion and just write numbers. Big deal. She writes a fucking article that 20 people read. So we are all supposed to fall down on her fucking knees. You ever read those articles? It's no. fucking about box scores. I want to read no people analysis who can talk football whatsoever. and not just write numbers. Repeats everything she hears. I don't. Online. Football is not interesting to me when you say 
uh, when the rain is blowing and down and the wind is coming in at a 3.4% or higher, the New York Jets punt 22% of the time. That shit's not football to me. That's not interesting. Yeah. Everybody's got to. I would rather listen to um, the Buffalo coach talk about terrorism and uniting his team. <laughs> it's unfucking believable. I mean, you want to come here and talk shit about the Jets. It's like it's a Jet channel. We're all feeling good about this offseason. And she's going to come in and start spouting out bullshit. It's like, then why the fuck do you cover this team? Go find another fucking team. Go be a fan of some other team. Maybe she's not a fan. Who knows? But go fucking find other teams to follow that you could sit there and get yourself all excited about and say how good their offensive line is. The only reason I've ever seen that name come up in any chat on any show is to write the comment, I wrote an article about it to try to self-promote. That's it. Right. That's all it's ever been. Right. I go onto Twitter and I read what people say and I read what the guys on my channel say and I fucking, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. take the topic and I write shit, yeah, but I've never watched film in my fucking life and I don't know anything about fucking football. Yeah. Because How I would you see, attack this I offense? How would you attack this film. defense? They don't know. Right. Right. You could do a test because you could just have people say, oh, yeah, um, he's Bowers is not a good blocker. Right. And it's like, no, that's not what was originally said. What was originally explained was he's not an inline blocker. But then if, if, then if you're going to go on to a channel. Who the fuck are you to fucking talk to me? I should be ashamed of myself. Go fucking play in traffic. Don't worry about it. She could be ashamed of herself for passing her off herself off as a fucking yeah. um fucking writer of articles when I did it for a different company. It's all fucking bullshit. They get no money. They get like if they if if thirty thousand people look at her article, she makes five bucks. Do you think she ever did that? She probably never broke a thousand. It's all bullshit anyway. It's just so they could sit there and say, "Oh, I'm a writer." You're not a writer. If you were a writer, you'd be in that fucking room asking uh, Robert Sala questions. That's a fucking writer. His name is Rich Samini, Connor Hughes. Those are real writers. Those are real, real press. They are actually in the room. I have my free. I have two articles on Green Bean Jeff fans thing, and I and I wrote for this other freaking company, and and did some articles. So I got to put. Whoa. I, I got Whoa. to call myself a writer. Whoa. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I got to the call myself a that? writer. Try now to fucking I'm a sound like you're better than anybody. Yeah, show me your check as a writer. I probably, I believe, I sold more copies of the book me and my wife wrote than she ever got views on her stupid articles. I mean, watch some freaking film. Understand the game. Nick at least coached football. He understands the game. At least I watch film and I could talk about players yeah. and how they perform. At least, and, even if oh, I don't know that much, at least I watched it over and yeah. over again. And, 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 and do you know how I uh, how I got that job in coaching? I didn't get it by doing the action of the main writer's name. Blew it. I didn't get it that way. Right. I'm not feeding off of other people saying, oh, well, X Factor is smart guys, so that makes me a good writer. Like, no, it, I don't know. I like Swamp Ranger. It's willing to be, basically spend hey, lots of time hey, writing free. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're not allowed to formulate an opinion. You just have to read numbers. You should be ashamed of yourself. Dane, I'm so glad you caught that. Thank you. I mean, and the thing is, is I'm the first one to say. I'm the first one to say. There's no difference between what I know and what Dane knows. You know what? Or what Jet Sean 41. knows. We're Jet just... 41 is right. I think I think that's let's go. Let's yeah. move on. No, but I just want to I just wanted on. to say that one thing. This is not about I'm higher up or she's higher up or you know more and I'm higher up. What the fuck higher up? What know, the no, fuck is I'm, she? I'm saying every all of us, we admittedly, we are not doing this channel and this show does not get views, and we do not have people streaming here because we know any more than anybody here. The reason that we have viewers here is because we did it. And that's the big thing. Yeah, we actually created a channel and did it. And number two, because you fucking like us and we're entertaining. It has nothing to do with jet knowledge. I mean, maybe we have people? some knowledge, but I mean, but it's not because we think or anyone thinks we know more than anybody else. But she comes into chats and acts like she's some kind of expert. I've been watching for over 40 years. She's no expert. 
because she's writing stu- she's writing stupid statistics and not acknowledging the part that can't be read in a statistic or a box score, and that is chemistry, the way pl- players play with each other. You have to you actually have to have played sports to understand that team sports. But in any case, I'll let it go too. I love to beat the dead horse, man. I love it. I love it. Believe me, it won't. Uh, believe me, we will hear about it from people. So it's not over. I guarantee you, we're going to hear about it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit either. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know why? Ain't a fucking shit? member of my channel. So who the fuck is she to me? <laughs> Look, they're like, they're like Thank twenty. God. Thank you, Jesus, like, for like that. Anybody who has a problem with anything I say or do, or whatever, if they have like a problem with it, they think it's so hurtful to me. It's not. The only person that can hurt me is like if Nick got upset with me and didn't want to talk to me anymore. If fucking oh. Johnny, if Johnny oh. got upset with me, if Dano got upset with me, if Wild Wave got upset with me, there are people I respect and like, and they become friends, and I care about them. I don't give a shit about all the other people that are going to sit there out there that are going to judge me and say, well, you shouldn't have done that and stick their head in and, and give those fucking judgments. I don't care. I really don't care. You do the hot sauce challenge. What if I do the ranch challenge? I'll drink this whole packet of ranch if we get $50 in Super Chats. Oh, that's worse. I will drink the whole packet of ranch right now. Oh, my God. And wash oh. it down with a packet of ketchup. Do it, guys. Give them money. Give them money. <laughs> Give them money, guys. I I'm just trying to change the energy here. <laughs> uh, what's this? I can't get upset with you guys, especially when you guys spit. How many? Let, let me just ask one question while while we're waiting for the fifty bucks to come in. Uh, how many of you would sit here and subscribe to the channel if we just read numbers at you? How many of you would take the time out of your night to interact and engage with us if we just read numbers to you? Never paid attention to your comments. Never wanted to discuss anything that you cared about. We just wanted to read at you and just give you numbers about shit. No one wants to do that. I, I don't even want to read articles like that. They don't have their own platform to speak because they can't hold a conversation. Right. When you write articles, you're not really taking anybody else's input. You're just putting it out there in the world. Like, and then you, start, you, to take other your, people's you start to believe your own shit that it's fact okay. because you wrote it. So you start yeah, to believe it. Well, Oh, and by the way, Sean, you know you're my boy, too. I'd be devastated if you ever were mad at me, dude. Devastated. You're my fucking boy, Sean. One day we're going to drink together and hang out in Temecula. Maybe we'll even go to In-N-Out Burger. Animal those freaking fries, man. We'll animal those fries. Even though if it gets in your beard, we don't care. We're going to animal those fries, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Bl- I didn't block her because I don't care. But like, I don't care because she wasn't like writing cursing me out or anything that I needed to block her. I don't care. But I'm just saying it's just like she's saying. It, first of all, we were addressing everything she was saying, so her accusation that we weren't hearing her side was bullshit. We were just destroying her side, like because she refused to acknowledge and address the real thing that I was saying. Address 13 different offensive lines. You see how she got quiet when she talked about Cleveland? You know why she talked about Cleveland? Because she heard somebody else do it. That wasn't her take. That wasn't hers. Rifka didn't realize, well, Cleveland won, and they have, that's something that's been going around. One jackass put that on Twitter or something and said, Cleveland. So, of course, she had to grab onto it. And as soon as I said, yeah, but they lost two tackles – and their replacement stayed healthy the whole year, and they didn't have to keep replacing their offensive line. She didn't say, oh, well, that's a good point. What did she do? She just ignored what I said as we shot down each argument because she didn't know that part of the argument. All she so knew, uh, she read Joe Biden the- thought the Francis Scott Keybridge had train tracks that he went over years ago, huh? That was interesting. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I'm, like, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Okay. Uh, we'll that- let it go. We'll let it go. We have to let it go. But oh, I had to change. The Sean McAteer will never get mad at me. Oh, he's my friend. Sean McAteer with the best beard in Jets chat. I'm gonna say it like the guy from Jamaica from the Cool Runnings movie. Sean McAteer is my friend. 
<laughs> OBJ then OBJ. Correct. <laughs> Go New York Jets. Ranch. Ranch. 48 more dollars and you're eating that ranch, sucker. David D getting it started. <laughs> you better. It's I gotta get to bed. And we gotta be up at 445. So who is Swamp? Wait a second. Swamp came out of nowhere. Is a swamp? Are you someone who just watches the show and never chats, but needed to come in to tell me to calm down? Because if that's true, that's hysterical. That we actually got somebody new texting. But hey, it's Swamp I, Ranger. I, I don't know if you had a different name. I don't recognize your name. I'm sorry if you were here and I forgot. But welcome to the channel and thanks for being here. And don't worry, my blood pressure is fine. I love it, man. I love banter. I love fighting. That's the thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's why me and Nick are such good friends, because all we do is fight. <laughs> and and the other and you know, and we just we just don't kiss ass, guys. We don't kiss ass here, you know, unless it's earned. There are people I'll kiss their ass because I I respect them and it's earned. But I'm not gonna just kiss somebody's ass because of some kind of title that they have. Bullshit. Swamp Ranger said, I came in and I saw you over live. I heard Nick going off, so I had to rewind. Yeah, it's it's very rare. that I'm I'm tense today. I'm not going to lie. Like, like I said, I come down to Virginia. I'm five states away. And my mother gets rushed to the hospital. I'm like, son of a bitch. And I'm down in Virginia for four weeks here at, at the hotel. So I had to deal with that. And I'm a little tense. And for some reason, when Jeremy got upset, that made me go even a little further. I don't like that. And, uh, no one is right. Uh, but Swamp Ranger, I did put my link in the chat there. Proud New York Jets fans, if you would subscribe to there, you got to use it as a marketing play now, right? So it's a free advertisement. If, if you like that rant that I did, please join the show, um, the channel. Uh, you will have fun. And the real question is, where is Denmark Andy? And if any of you go to my YouTube page and click the bio, it is a my Proud New York Jets fan page is now a Denmark Andy fan club page and i'm a denmark enthusiast <laughs> oh and by the way i just want to just want to say this it's Thank funny you, that Swamp. she said we should be ashamed of herself right and this <laughs> is not a, this is not a knock on this person i love joe blewett i respect the shit out of him but i just want to make this point because this is what's so interesting and i love him for doing this when people make really bad points and have really bad takes when, when joe blewett is talking like during his stream he calls it out and he shoots them down hard. Like he does. He's not nice about it in a, in a way where he goes, well, I respect it. He says flat out, you're wrong. And he's very, very blunt and he's very direct, just like I was being. So when she said you should be ashamed of yourself, understand. And to me, Joe Blewett is X Factor. I mean, nothing against the other guys, but he's the guy, in my opinion. He does it. So for her to get mad that we're doing the same thing that he does, like shoot down dumb things when people are saying when people are saying takes that are ridiculous or not true or just repeating crap, he shoots them down for it. So we did nothing that he doesn't do. We did the same thing he does to people who do that, who are putting nonsense out there. And I am tired of the nonsense. It's the same thing as when someone says that Brock Bowers can't block. No, he's not an inline tight end blocking. That's not, he can't block. If you watch, he's a very good blocker in space. Like, people need to get it straight. Because it sounds stupid when you repeat things and don't understand what you heard. What you heard was he's not an inline tight end. That doesn't mean in space he doesn't block. So, he loves the bro romance. Yeah, we love each other. Ah, the Bowers Bros represented. All right. Good for you, John. Nothing John, wrong with that. No. Yeah, Blewett is absolutely great. I, mean, I don't mind Blewett. But he's really good. He's really good. Like I've learned the ability to convey information. And there's people who just even in an article, you feel they're not talking with you. A great writer has the ability to make you feel as you're reading their article you're in a discussion with them and they break it down and they explain it and they layer it and, and they present it in an interesting way. And then there's people who just write numbers and just try to throw a couple words in there and it's not interesting. So 
There's, there are people who do that analytics and they convey it in a very good way that's readable and relatable. And then there's people who just bore you with numbers. And I just, I don't, I don't like that shit. And it's not that I have anything against numbers. I'm a numbers guy, but right, right. be interesting and sell the article and sell yourself and just don't go into other people's shows after not being there for fucking months on end. When you go into other shows at the same time slot at us and you're only popping in here now for a little self-promotion, right. we don't need you. We can move on. We, we've survived without you. We'll be okay. There's we'll be all right. Of, there's, there's plenty of people out there that will kiss your ass because they want you to keep watching and supporting the yeah, channel. Yeah, this is not that channel. Right. They'll say everything you want them to say to you and they'll be all nice about it. But, you know, I mean, that's just uh, it's just not going to happen here. Not anymore. I used to be like that. Not anymore. It's not like I'm I'm here to speak. I'm here to be like to feel good about what I'm saying and know I'm saying the shit I believe. I ain't lying for anybody. I don't, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I got I got more important women. I got more important women in my life telling me I should be ashamed of myself. I don't need you to do it. Forty <laughs> percent of Jet Nation wants Bowers. That's more if because the other sixty percent want other. That sixty percent is divided mm. because some want wide receivers, some want a trade, some want to trade down for Joe Alt, some want you know uh, Fashano. So what this is saying, Johnny, is that the most Jet fans, more Jet fans than any other player want Bowers, that he's the number one on the Jet fans list if he's truly 40%. Because if we put together every player like that the Jets could do plus a trade down, 40% would win the poll. Well, you know what? One day I'll do the poll. But I'm not talking about just 50 people that are watching here. I'm saying all of Jet Nation. If that was accurate, if 40% want Bowers. Blewett is the only Joe in America that does not like Alt. Tells you all you need to know about him. Well, he might be right. I mean, I don't know, but I don't agree with him. But that doesn't. But you know, anybody can bust, right? I mean, if if I hadn't learned it in the past forty three years, I would have learned it with Neil Smith, because I thought he was a can't miss prospect. Now I don't know with how who? you. Could not, I don't know how you could not like Joe Walsh. Like I, I don't. I didn't see the video, so I'm not going to criticize. I don't know what Joe is seeing in the film that he doesn't like, but I watched film with Dom C because he was actually teaching me what to look for. Like he was showing me. He was like, you see, he was literally saying in slow, we were watching all 22 and he was saying, do you see how he locks up his hands on the inside? Do you see how he moves his feet? Do you see how he keeps his balance? Do you see how he moves the player, the, the, the player he's blocking? Like he literally was teaching me Everything about the game and about offensive line with Joe Walt. And I so don't I have know. Dom to blame for why the, you are the way you are. <laughs> but I'm saying is I have no idea because I have not seen it. What he could possibly what problem he could have with Joe Walt. Because the one thing I remembered about it is we went through four different games and we were picking random plays and he dominated every single play. I mean, it was like. I said, I said, Dom, is this like the greatest college offensive lineman ever? And he goes, no, probably not. He goes, but at the same time, find me one that's better or just not as – like maybe you could be as good, but it's hard to find an example of an offensive lineman that's better than Joe Alt unless you talk about the steroid era with Mandarich or whatever his name was or Manovich. You know, remember that guy that had, was full of steroids? Otherwise, you're going to have trouble finding film showing a more dominant offensive tackle than 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 alt he he's a stud so i don't know where that comes from i don't know why he's down on him i have a feel it's a bold take because that's the kind of take when he becomes a pro bowl tackle no one's gonna forget you did that i think it's also i think it could be a comparison to other tackle ones in previous drafts because normally when we see a tackle one in a draft you have the label franchise tackle, can't miss prospect attached to it. A lot of guys get that thrown around with left tackles, right? And mm -hmm. you don't have that in this draft. So maybe he's just trying to oversell that. I, I, I don't know. But I I do have to get to bed. I just took my insulin. I got to throw some garbage away out in the hall. Okay. And then uh, I, I promise that tomorrow I will 
be so ashamed of myself that I will never think of this person again. Okay. <laughs> Don't let it ruin your night or anything, man. It made a gr- it made for my a mom's in the hospital. You think I give oh. a fuck about this person? Like really? No. no. It helped me de stress a little bit, but Dude, she's gonna, she's gonna be all right. Don't come That's into cool. our chat and and attack us when we counter your point. Don't say that we didn't give you a chance to rebuttal your point when we commented on every fucking stupid comment that you put up. Even when I'm texting you, I hate this person. Can we stop addressing it? Oh, let me see. Check the private chat. It's there. No, no, the private oh. chat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, and then you kept that's going, and that's what made me erupt, that we kept going. Oh, my God. I, I texted you, I hate her. Don't say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and that was before you or I blew up. Yeah. yeah. I just don't like it. Don't use our channel to get your name out there. Yeah. Twister's gonna have Twisted's going to have a lot of fun with it for a long time. Kuka Lake is in there. What's going on, Kuka Lake? Tony Mandarich. That's right, Tony Mandarich. He probably put out the best film ever, but he was loaded with steroids because as soon as he came off the steroids, he was thank the biggest you, bust in the history of the NFL. And Johnny, thank you. I saw your text too. Let me go because I, I the kids are trying to call. I got to let them yeah, know. Yeah, talk to your kids, man. Go, go, get out of here. Good. Man. Everyone, I'm going to try to get on my channel tomorrow, probably around 6 o'clock. I might do an early show because I don't want to, I can't go on 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So okay. the Thursday night throwdown will be before Green Bean. I'll try to get on at six, and maybe I'll go six to eight. So if you're coming home from work, or or uh, if you get a minute from reading mathematical sports articles, come over and take a look at my show. Maybe we'll have some fun, and we'll laugh, and no one will talk at you, and we'll engage with you, because I do crazy shit like that. <laughs> good night, man. I hope your mom's good. I'll check in with you tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk, and uh, just. Do me a favor. Yeah. Be ashamed of yourself. I will. I feel I'm going to get that tattoo. I'm going to get that tattoo. I'm ashamed. I'm going to do that. That's going to be a new Jet Chaos shirt. I'm going to put that. Yes. Store. Yes. I'm, I'm ashamed. Oh, oh, I like that. Proud New York. Ashamed New York Jet fan. I might change the channel. Ashamed New York Jet <laughs> Everyone in the chat, you guys are awesome. We'll talk to you guys soon. And thank you for supporting us. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. Sad, but fun. Good night. Go Jets. I totally want to end the stream on you, but I wouldn't do that to you. Don't do that. It's an important show that we do here every week. <laughs> All right. So what are we going to do? The truth is, is there's only three minutes of the show left. So the reality is, is that Nick... You know, you kind of he couldn't finish the last three minutes of the show. He couldn't make it, folks. He had to go with three minutes left in the show. Dana was probably screaming, "Let me in! Let me in! I'll replace him." It's uh, there's only three minutes left in the show, guys. Watsu K ninety nine is probably on or something right now. I think Harlan is saying that. So definitely, as I end the show, definitely go over there and support Adam. I'm sorry if we overlap with him. I hate you guys having to make that choice, but. There's nothing. Oh no! Wait a second. Maybe we're not overlapping with them, which is really nice. So go check over. Check out Adam. Go there. Um, watch UK ninety nine. He, he does really interesting shit. It's not just the Jets. You know, tonight is the Jets, but he does like he talks about the Knicks and he talks about the Rangers and he covered. He did a live reaction hockey game. There's all kinds of exciting stuff going over there. Watch UK ninety nine. Enjoy his channel. It's there. It's alive. It's lit. It's all that good stuff. I'm going to go. I have to do some schoolwork. I have to eat. I have to do all that goody stuff. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. What am I going to end with? I'm going to end with something fun. This is for you, Dano. I'm doing this for you, man. Just for you. Let's see. What is it going to be? Just for you. This is just for Dano. It's an old one. It's an oldie but goodie. It's when I went to MetLife. We are live. We got Harry W. We got Richie from Jets Media. Matt O'Leary. Iowan Jets fan. we in the house. We got Dom C. in the house. We got Steve. Live CEO of the Jet Lounge. So I knew I'd get rich on my channel. <laughs> 
see what's going on. Yeah, there we go. Woo. Let's go. 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 Let's